Good evening, students of CTE. Again, it's really a pleasure to be with you, and I hope you ask a lot of questions this time. And welcome to this uh, evening telecast. So, I hope you're all with your books, with your papers and pencils, and ready with a lot of questions. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Shifali Ray, and uh, she's been with us several times. And uh, we are always enlightened and very excited by the things that she tells us. Uh, you, can, you probably must be using a lot of the suggestions, activity types that she has given in your classrooms. We would be very glad for any feedback. So, Shifali, so very kind of you to come and thank you once again. Thank you for inviting me, Anju. It's always a pleasure to come and talk to you, uh, students. And uh, each time that we present something, I'm sure we also learn. Well, uh, today, as you know, the topic is uh, language, no, Anju language games. Yeah. No, we decided to have a discussion on language games. Yes. Uh, well, uh, to begin with, let us consider the learner who learns English as a second language. The learner has to grapple with two things. One, the learner has to master the new language, which has a completely different syntax. Now, if you know in Hindi, Hindi has a loose word order. I mean, you can shift words around and the meaning doesn't change so much, but that happens in English. Two, it has a different sound system. And then there's inflection and things in English, which may not be there in Hindi. And three, the lexis, the words are different. You know, the word formation is different. So the very nature of language is different. And the second thing that they need to grapple with is any foreign language comes along with some kind of a content. Uh, the content would be the situations or the context. Maybe, you know, foreign may be different. Yes. And uh, the similarly... Cultural baggage, really. There's a cultural baggage, yes. And similarly, the concepts. They should be culturally uh, would be different. Maybe geographically they are different. So the learner is actually grappling with two things. And the teacher finds sometimes that the students feel little you know, hemmed in. And uh, they are not very motivated. And especially when you develop the language skills, the oral skills of students, uh, well, my uh, discussion with teachers, said, uh, I mean, uh, I have learned from that students, while they're doing conversation, this sometimes at a loss, what to say. And it's very quickly, you know, runs out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, don't, they can't sustain an activity as such. And at the same time, teachers feel that sometimes they have finished the lesson or the planning. I mean, one can't plan exactly minute for minute, mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do. So they are left wondering, you know. It is, this is all where the games come in. And this is the problem that the teachers face. So teachers have a responsibility. First responsibility on the teacher is to minimize the anxiety and the stress. Absolutely. Because the child is already afraid of English and say, oh my God, it's so different. Two... The teacher has to make the learner understand the language you are learning is related to your life. So has to relate the language linguistic content to real life. For that, the teacher needs to create situations and contexts which make the language learning meaningful. Mm. And uh, also, the teacher has to do this in an interesting manner. It has to be interesting. Uh, it can't be dull because if it is dull or if it is too, much new, too many new things, then it can be intimidating. Yes. And Anju, another thing I think we'll, uh, earlier when we were talking of critical reading, we were talking of also learner styles. Mm -hmm. You know, there are different learners with different learning styles. There are visual learners, there are kinesthetic learners, there are auditory learners. So the teacher has to cater to these needs of the students on one hand, and on the other hand, do activities that will develop these senses in the other students. Yes. You know, the visual has to be made auditory, the kinesthetic mm -hmm. has to be made visual, yeah. etc. And, uh, there, yes, now, any kind of learning situation to be made interesting is, one, is to remove the anxiety, two, make it meaningful, three, provide support. So the teacher has to provide a lot of support. Mm -hmm. Now, well, in a game, the support can be provided when they're playing in a team, a mixed ability team. Then what is happening? The support is given uh, by the other 
uh, by the classmates. Uh, it's basically a cooperative kind of a collaborative kind of effort. And hmm. mainly the brighter students give support, right? Yeah, the brighter students give support and here they do it ungrudgingly yes. because uh, <coughs> it is the goal they're looking after, looking for the goal, completing the task and so they help. And lastly, <coughs> teacher has to provide an impetus by providing some kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, the challenge is competition. Yeah. So if you have a competition, so there's some kind of a challenge. So yeah. let's look at this again, what we said just now. <coughs> let's look at what the teacher needs to do in the ESL classroom. Minimize anxiety, make the linguistic content relevant to life, create interest, create context, make allowance for different sterling styles, provide direct or indirect support, and provide impetus through challenge and competition. But uh, traditionally, you ask a teacher, the teacher may not really like take to language games very easily. Yes. You know, because there are certain misconceptions. The misconceptions are uh, that language game, lang learning itself is very solemn affair. Learning. Hence, there should be no hilarity, no fun. And language uh, games create fun and hilarity. They also consider that, uh, think that language games make one do silly things. Yes. You know, very babyish things, silly things. So what they feel is, mm, language games, no, 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 not for the learning situation. For enjoyment, yes. For fun, yes. But not for learning. And they don't like the noise. Teachers are not used oh, to. Oh, yes. They hate the and the teacher feels a good class is a quiet class. A good class is a disciplined class. And so the activity, the competition, the curiosity, the anxiety of winning and all, all that, you know, uh, disturbs it. Yeah. And sometimes the teacher feels the class has gone out of control. Yes. No? Yes. And, well, some teachers do use language games and when I've been talking to them, they say we use it as fillers. When we have nothing to do, like, oh, we have some time left over, mm -hmm. then, you know, we use these language games. Mm -hmm. Which is not really true. Because language games, if they are pro organized properly, have a focus, they can be used for effective language learning. Yes, and they, certainly. Mm, and they can be used at any point at the lesson. Maybe the icebreaker or the warm-up. They could be used even while they are understanding a text or they are reading, trying to understand a text. Or it could be as a summing up. It could be as practice session. Anything. Well, so uh, let's look at what some experts say about language games. Of course, every teacher has her anxiety uh, and would not like to keep language games at bay. But let us listen to what the experienced people and let us read what the experienced people have said. Now let's look at that slide. Let's look at what Joan Elliott said. Uh, Joan Elliott, the author of Interesting ESL Activities, says, the best way to teach children English is to create an illusion that they are just playing games. Okay. You know, where the focus is not on the linguistic content. But the focus game. is on winning. The focus on being better than the other team. So when they do this, the children are not, you know, they are not, uh, they're not anxious. And sometimes they learn much better and they come out with much better responses. Now let's look at what Andrew Wright has said. Let's here look at this slide now, the next slide now. Games help to encourage many learners to sustain their interest and work. Games also help the teacher to create contexts in which language is useful and meaningful. These are key words. Interest, useful and meaningful. Thus, the meaning of the language they listen to, read, speak or write will be more vividly experienced and therefore remembered. Yes. You know, children remember what the teacher did is by way of games in interesting fashion. One, the retention is better. This whole experience becomes memorable. So, so we have interest, usefulness, meaningfulness, vivid experience and better retention. That is the benefit that Andrew Wright, David Betteridge and Michael Buckby has given. Let's look at what are the different kinds of games that we have, Anju, I mean like, I'm sure. So we, there are guessing games. Yes, of There course. are guessing games. And then there are games using pictures. 
the games on word association i give a word you quickly give another word associated yeah, with yeah. it maybe yeah. opposite yeah. maybe you know that goes with it then there are games where you complete a there's a maze or a grid you got to find words in the maze or grid then we all know the charade you know the charade the dumb charade, the dumb charade. and there uh, that can be very effectively used for language learning especially to teach verbal phrases to teach continuous form of the verb then there is storytelling you know storytelling also um, uh, we may not be able to do it now but storytelling uh, it's something i found it very successful to be very successful with children mm -hmm. the teacher takes three boxes or puts make three columns and in each one she puts three parts of a complex sentence so the first one would be the noun phrase which mm -hmm. is the subject second would be the basically the verb phrase which is the verb and the intensifier or the you know adverb and possibly another adverbial phrase or something you know, the place or whatever the, the there are about 5 6 or maybe 10 of each kind so the children pick up one from each box and string them together as at random mm -hmm. and then that becomes the first sentence of the story okay. so i worked with children where it, it turned out the brown bun rolled down the deep green jungle mm -hmm. so the story now they got to carry the story forward from here mm -hmm. so this also uh, becomes very very interesting so uh, i think should, could we do some games now yeah let's do some all right games. let me see what i we have here oh, all right uh, okay uh this uh, is a very simple game i think i'm sure i chose the story especially because i thought everybody everybody would be able to guess it so you got to guess the story uh well uh, let us see here yes now what you find see there there are some verbs there's felt flew looked saw had tried found thought picked dropped rose drank flew it's a very common story all children have gone through this now by looking at the verbs in the story can you guess what this what the story would be can we have the words again i'd love to guess okay can, look can again hmm. flew okay so it looks like it should be a bird bird yeah um found thought picked rose drank so drank flew. So, so drank some water water for me picked picked something or the other as and dropped it and dropped it somewhere to, uh, somewhere yeah and initially felt something so if you drink if you link felt with oh, drink yeah. the felt, thirsty uh, yeah you felt thirsty. thirsty oh i've got it the What thirsty crow okay <laughs> yes that is but yes reason. that's so good mm. that's such a good story so well this is uh, uh, of course i picked this up the idea from mario rinvolucri's uh, grammar games okay. because he had chosen another story but i thought our indian children would be able to uh, you know tell the story yes, better yes, yes. okay let's go on to the next game this is we call it i call it the crack the sentence this is about learning the sentence boundaries and the word boundaries so let's look at the sentences one by one okay. and you and you'll have to read the sentence aloud okay? okay what you'll find is a conglomeration of words you'll have to separate the words and read the sentence okay we call it crack the sentence okay look at the letters this is a sentence written there can you separate the words first one cricket team has 11 players right yeah yes wow okay so this is word boundaries where one word ends and the other one begins okay, what's okay. the next one the cricket uh, sat on the leaf and sang <laughs> this is the other cricket now yes. the cricket sat on oh, the leaf and sang okay game, yeah uh well the man held uh the man held a number no wait let me see the man held held and ah acha and and what is it over umbrella oh an umbrella over his i head. know it's a little bit this <laughs> one they call the man held an umbrella over, over his head. head okay the last one a game is what we like a game is what we all like a game is what we all like so we are talking of language yeah. games so we must have a sentence on that very okay. interesting okay so this is here they tell children one spellings and then how when they write you know they leave the space you know this is the mechanics of writing Fantastic. and very the word boundaries game. very good okay game. let's go to the next game 
uh, here, of course, you'll have to um, uh, look at me, Anju. Okay. Uh, and you have to look at me. I'm going to mime, Mr. Sharad. I'm going to mime something. And you are going to say that you are doing this. Okay. All right. Or maybe you could say you are doing this. Or you could say I think you are doing this. Or you could say aren't you doing this? Okay. It could be anything. Okay. And try to uh, put in a verbal phrase, you know, verbal phrase okay. in specific meaning. Okay. Uh, so here we go. And this is for you to try as well. Are you co combing your hair? Do you, uh, aren't you combing your hair? Yes, I'm combing my hair. <laughs> I'm also doing it up. I'm doing it up. You okay. know, you see the pins I'm taking out and putting. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, uh, are you sweeping the floor? Okay. And and, uh, and are you pushing? Pushing. I'm things? pushing something away. I'm pushing, pushing something, something away. away. Okay. Okay. <sighs> you are tired, aren't you? I'm tired. And what am I doing? Oh no! Oh, I want to relax. So I'm sitting. Back. Uh, and you're sitting back. I'm sitting okay. back. Oh okay. no, oh, no, no, I shouldn't sit back. I'm on t television. Oh my God. So <laughs> I sit up. What do I do now? I sit up. You sit I'm up. sitting up. Yes. I'm sitting up. Yes, okay. Sitting up. And that's so, a phrasal verb, sitting up. That's a phrasal verb, sit, up, sit yeah. back, with a phrasal verb. Yeah. So what we can do is, one child comes to the front of the class and the teacher may suggest, whisper or can give a card and the child does the action mm. and the others guess. Basically, this is an interesting way of practicing uh, ing words, basically the continuous yeah. form or even verbal phrases. Of course, with verbal phrases, one needs to be a little more theatrical because it has to be very, I, maybe I was not good enough. So you could, others can guess, mm -hmm. but sometimes they may. All right. Now, uh, here is a picture. Okay. Now, you will see a picture. And we're going to play a game based on this picture. What do you see in the picture? Oh, what a sweet cat. It's a tabby. Okay, cat. Now, it's tabby, a... Tabby, tabby something. It's a tab no, tabby cat. Is, you know, tabby cats are those with those lines on them. Okay. They okay. look like a uh, no, tiger. Okay. Now, uh, I call it word ping pong. Now, look at the uh, cat and give one describing word. And my job Cute. is oh. to give another. Immediately, I have to give another describing word, which is similar in meaning. Cute. Very cute. Uh, sweet. And okay, then? and now my turn. Okay. I will say, I say resting. Uh, resting, uh, what do I say? Uh, resting, something to do with resting, right? Uh, on the sofa. Re, re, okay. Nee, on now you should give me another describing word. Re, uh, re, re, re. Okay, relaxing. Oh, relaxing. relaxing of course. Okay, of course. okay. Now, now yes. your turn. My turn is uh, looking. Looking. Watching. Watching. Okay, then. now we're describing word. We say, say, I say, lazy. Uh, <laughs> now, lazy. Inact uh, inactive. Inactive, very good. So, you know, of <laughs> okay. course, we can think of various uh, describing words mm -hmm. and uh, the students are in two teams. It's so, so much fun. It's so mm -hmm. much fun. I and mean. teacher goes on writing these words on the board. So, the children are learning synonyms. At yeah. the same time, there are different children who have different experiences and different language, uh, mastery of the language. So there may be many new words coming up where, say for lazy, a child might know the words slothful. Mm. So the rest, it's enriching for the rest of the class when they learn some new words. So, you know, without, it, so basically it's using a pupil resource and, you know, the class becomes rich with language. Absolutely. And the children can copy these down. So it's basically learning synonyms. And also, uh, Shifali, this can be a competitive game. Yeah, you know, it can be competitive. Can be competitive. Have, uh, two with, groups, with a, a stopwatch, with a stopwatch. Stop so if you can't, you miss out your five points. Yeah. Then exit. So it's basically how quickly they can respond. Absolutely, huh? so good. And respond. Now, and there's another picture. Let's look at the other picture. And uh, it's a similar game, but slightly different. This also word ping pong. Now, uh -huh, yeah, and it's also a word ping pong. Uh, Anju, you will give me a describing word. They say, suppose you say the word calm. Hmm. I have to give, the, but it's a calm water. So serene could huh. be the next one, right? Uh, yeah, that is okay. Now uh. that the game has changed slightly. Now if you say calm, this stands for the calm water or the calm place. Now I got to use the word calm with something else. Oh, multiple meanings. Okay. Yes. So okay. you say calm. Calm. So the calm water or the oh. calm. Uh, so I say a calm, 
calm, calm mind, calm person, mind, okay. a calm room, okay. or calm mind, not room, but that will be quiet room, calm mind. Okay. Now my turn, if I say a beautiful, beautiful for scene, it's a beautiful scene, beautiful. It's a beautiful girl. Ah, beautiful girl. girl. Okay. okay, I say still, still for water, no, it's unmoving, still water, still. Okay, so uh, still. Think of pictures, it's not a moving picture, so uh -huh. what will you say, a still? Uh, uh, okay, uh, still, still haunted house. Uh, a still, still picture? A still picture? A still okay, picture, picture, not moving. Still no, it's a still okay. picture. It's still. not a movie, it's not animated. Okay. Isn't okay. okay, now if you say. Uh, if I say, okay, Natch. that's now my time. Natch. Yeah. Okay, so then I can also say, uh, uh, well, I could say maybe natural beauty. Natural, okay, natural beauty. I say uh, natural color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this way, so they're learning the also the various shades of meaning in semantics or the various meanings of one word and how yes. the different ways they can be used. Again here, we are using a lot of ch children resource because many children would know those who read a lot, those yeah. who watch English yeah. movies, they yeah. would be able to contribute. So basically we are involving them a lot in the Absolutely. activity. Absolutely. Okay, now this is a third uh, picture. Uh, Let's look at this picture. Oh, so cute. Mm, this is a little bajrigar which has found the, its window to be open, the door to be open. Mm -hmm. Now it is cautiously stepped at the threshold of the cage and is thinking, wondering something. Now the game is team A, like Anju, you are team A. Mm -hmm. You will ask a question what the bird may be thinking of. Okay, okay. what it may be thinking of. And my job is to immediately give you a reply. Okay, so uh, the so I have to talk about the, what the bird is thinking bird about. Is thinking. No, the bird is thinking. Never about been out of the yeah. cage. So first time this one. Hmm. So bird is thinking about. Should I fly out into the blue sky? Well, you must. Otherwise, you'll never. You'll always be locked in. Okay, the bird is thinking. Oh, oh I see the cat over there. The cat may eat will me the up. Cat, will, will, the, the, will the will cat. the cat eat me up? Maybe I should stay in. Oh, uh, uh, it might, but if you can fly up onto that cupboard, it won't. Now let me say, I say, the bird is thinking, will I, get be, will I be caught again and put into the cage? And I have to reply, mm. no, I think they deliberately left it open so that I could fly away. I think they were... Oh, they said nice people, so yeah. they decided that they shouldn't put you in the, in the, the bird in the cage. Okay, I ask one more question. Oh, but where will I get food to eat? Where will I get food to eat? Well, all birds get food fr from nature and I'm sure you will also get your food from your natural surroundings. So is it a good decision to go away? I think it is a good decision to go away. Okay, <laughs> right. So, you know, we could use pictures like this yeah. from real life yeah. situations yeah. and basically we are practicing question forms. Yes. We are practicing WH questions. Uh, we'll, uh, where, when, what we can and we're also practicing inverted questions is it a good decision, will the cat eat me up mm -hmm. or uh, do, you, do you think I should really fly away or whatever yeah. and the answers also could be you know the, you, we could tell the children to use uh, words like perhaps, more certainly or don't you worry you know which is normal interaction so children are learning basically in real life meaningful interaction how people speak and it, the answers that the team B gives or the team A gives mm. need not be a complete sentence Absolutely. because in real life we don't so uh, perhaps they might even say, will I be caught again? Perhaps could mm -hmm. be the answer. Mm -hmm. But Anju decided the kind of way out. She said, no, they left it deliberately mm -hmm. open. Yeah. This is very good. So in any, you're also giving a value to the children that mm -hmm. no, the birds shouldn't be caged. So these people have discovered this a wrong thing to do and yes. they've left the cage open. All right. So much for mm, pictures. Now we're going to play another game, which we, I, I, again, I got it from um, uh, the Grammar Games book. It's called Verb Search. Let's look at this grid with so many letters. We've got to find how many verbs there are in the grid. Let's look at it now. <laughs> oh, okay. I can see kept immediately. Okay, uh, right then. at the beginning. Then go further. And then what do I see? And uh, how do you look at you it in all uh, horizontally, no, no, vertically? Uh, uh, which uh, way? Uh, you look at it horizontally only. Only yeah. horizontally. So kept, I have takes, I can see uh, as well. Yes. Then next line. Bake, I can see. 
the first line. You bake, you can see, yes. Yeah. Then, then we what have do I see? Second one. Burn, I can burned. see. Burned. Okay. Yes. I can third see. Third one. Third, I can see locked. Locked and ties. And ties, okay. No, there's ties. Yes, yes, no? yes. And in the fourth row? Fourth row. There's only one. There is only one, is it? Yes. So, what It's do a I very see? small word. It's a very small word. Now, let me guess. Uh, I think I'll give up. Uh, mm, begin from the, look from the beginning. Look from the... It's towards the first half. It's towards the... Bit. 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 So, yes. bite and bit. Yes. Okay, let's go down. Broke. Broke. And let's go down. And then sung. And, and pushed. Pushed. Okay, so here are the answers. And I also tried to find one word that went, uh, you know, diagonally. And I found ho. You know, hoing the garden? Yes, yes. So, hoing. Yes. So, kept, takes, bake. And then go, even go. Ooh, go even and go burn. burn. We missed yeah, that out. Yeah. Ties. Oh, that's sorry. That R, the R shouldn't be, uh, of course, highlighted. highlighted. No. And locked, bit, broke, lit, sung, pushed. So this is, of course, Great. for younger children, yeah. younger learners. But of course, even we could, it depends upon the uh, verb, what we put. We could yeah. use the level. Yeah, we, we could raise the level. We could just raise the level. We yes. could just raise the level and yes. use it for the older children. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to play a game. I, we call it, I know what it is. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a guessing game. Remember, we said it's a g we need to play a guessing game. Yeah. So, Anju, can I have that red bag? Yes. This is the red bag that Shefali has got along. So, there's a red bag and it has a few odds and ends in it. A few things. Now, what the game is, Anju will put her hand in it and she will feel the objects and she'll take hold of one. And she has to describe aloud, you know, the shape that she can guess, the texture, the uh, uh, or what it is made of, or whether it is uh, whether it's elongated or roundish, and then she will say, "I think it is." I think it is, mm -hmm. and then we will take it out and see and and if Anju is right. Okay, Anju, here we go. Okay, let me try. Oh, interesting things. Okay. Have you got Let's something? Don't take it out. I'm okay. Not it now out. describe it. Uh, well, uh, the it, it is, is a little, uh, you know, it's not very smooth, the texture. Not very smooth, okay. Not very smooth. And uh, it is not uh, round, but it is roundish. Okay, it's round, not round, but roundish, okay. Yes. Mm. And it uh, it has something, it, it appears like an ovalish thing mm -hmm. with a protrusion on top. Okay, it's an ovalish thing with the oval, oval in shape with a protrusion on top. Top. Okay. And, what do you think it and is? There's the bottom also there's some something which sort uh -huh. of uh, goes inside looks like a, a tortoise or uh, if not a tortoise it looks like some kind of a play thing of the okay time. let's have a look let's so it's a, look. a tortoise is it no oh. <laughs> it's a shell it's a shell it's a shell it's a uh, it's a shell uh, and you put it on your palm so that they yeah, can see they it can yeah see it, yeah you can see it says it's, it's a, a seashell shell. yeah wow it's a seashell. So, nice so she said it is roundish. She was right. She said the texture was coarse. She was right. She said it has a protrusion on top. She was right because it has a tip. But she said it's a plaything. Maybe you could play with seashell. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. But it's certainly not a toy. So you it's know cute. there's a surprise at the end. So games have this thing. There's one. There's a guessing game. One. There is a curiosity to know what it is. And then at the end, there is a surprise. If it is, you are not right, then there's a lot of laughter and fun. That's all. So again, and how much describing is happening? Yes. Right? Basically, the learning how to describe things. But before this, learners need to know the words or sentences used to describe texture, shape, size, and even purpose. Maybe you could even say, "I think it is something to play with." You know, it mm -hmm. depends upon what language language you want to the children to practice. So this is, I, we, I call it granny's bag. Mm -hmm. So you can put, you see I put one film, empty uh, film roll case, I put a uh, staple, staple box and often people say it's a matchbox. Yes. But it's not a matchbox, of course it is something like that and most interestingly uh, I have put a tiny toothbrush, I have the foil of a tablet medicine, yeah. medicine and I have a, which foxes everyone it's a small bottle but often people end up saying it's a mobile phone 
Oh, okay. Because they feel the protrusion is the yeah. antenna and this. So there's great fun and there are many more things. It is, depends upon you what you like to put into granny's back. And also, what, of course, children would, should have learned those words before you do this activity. Anyway, it's, it's, it's great fun. It's great fun. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, let's now, we have played a few games. Now let's just think of what are the benefits of using games. Shall we consider that? Yes. yes. One. Uh, what happens to the language? The language becomes more meaningful. Yes. And for real life purposes. See, if Anju did not describe or did not think aloud, you know, the whole communication is not happening. And then there's an information gap. We, I don't know what it is. Anju does not know what it is. And she's trying to make a guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the language is used for real life communication. And there's a need to communicate. There is a need to communicate. Uh, so for example, the, uh, the uh, uh, game about the bird. Now, what is the bird thinking? So there's a need to communicate. When she says the question, I have to give the answer. When she uh, poses the question, I have to give the answer. There's a need to communicate. Yeah. And the focus is not so much on the linguistic content. But mm -hmm. the focus is on the, uh, you know, doing the activity, completing the task, or, you know, uh, basically winning, maybe, yeah. team A or B, you know, when yes. you get points, yeah. you're winning. So even if you haven't guessed correctly, so what I say here, I know what it is, let's look at the steps of, uh, I know what it is. See, if you were to write it, it would be like this, feel in the bag, take hold of one object, feel it well with your hands. Now describe what you find, shape, texture, size, surface. So here is the teacher's guidance. What are the things? Or what are the things that the child has to talk about? And guess what the object is? And then the sentence would be, "I think it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I guess whatever." And then they get two points. You, you get two points if you guess correctly. If you guess correctly, you get two points. But what is the last one? Even if you didn't make, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be done. If you didn't make the right guess, you would have learned to use a lot of language. language yeah. So the teacher gives a nice smiley to the child who has guessed because actually the child, the learner has tried to communicate. So that is uh, of one of the benefits. And let's look at the other benefits of uh, games. One, well, I and Anju were only two we were playing, so there was a sense of competition. So when there's a sense of competition, we are always trying to do our best. And we are conjuring all our experiences, all our previous knowledge, trying to do a good job of it. Yeah. So there is a kind of a challenge. And our, more inter our interest is in doing better than the other. Then when we play these games, put them into teams, children into learners into teams of mixed ability, what happens is they contribute. And they collaborate. And they help each other. And it is there when they ha one is helping, A is helping B, or um, uh, in, the, in within the, in the group, the learner B is learning. Or when C is helping D, or D is helping C, then C is learning. Because that learning is memorable. They remember when we were playing this game, I was unable to do it. Uh, and I was, this was the hint given to me. And this learning, they will never fail. This you know, retention is ensured. Yes. So there's cooperation, there's teamwork, and there's a bonding. So once you become a team, then they forget little squabbles and little quarrels they have had. Because now we have a common goal to win. Our team has to win. And mm -hmm. teacher has to play the game, or uh, the, uh, the role of a mediator. And also the scorer. Maybe we could call somebody from the, amongst the children to make them score, right? yes. to score. So there is cooperation. Of course, it is interesting. The game is interesting. The activity is interesting. Yes. It is challenging. And it makes the learners communicate. Absolutely. You no, know, it makes them communicate. And also, it, they, it encourages to perform, to participate and perform. Yeah. You know, and contribute and help each other. Fine. Now let's look at, uh, so if we use language games, language learning becomes what? More relaxed, we can say? Much more, much more relaxed. Much more relaxed. And uh, it uh, is re becomes related yes. to real life. Real life. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. as you said, it's much more effortless. Yes, if language learning becomes effortless now. It's nobody teaching me. Even if I didn't know the structure uh, that you are doing this, I hear my... Uh, a teammate saying it or I know so I or I'm it's whispered in my ear now it's your turn in our team so come on you say this I am learning it then you know and so much more enjoyable isn't it's it? so much more enjoyable more relaxed you know 
uh, something like what Joan Elliott said, you keep creating illusions, they're only playing a game. But actually they're playing a game in addition to that, they're also uh, learning the language. And it has an additional game, they learn to follow rules. Because games yeah. have rules. Games, games have, have rules. rules yeah. Though we don't want language games to have many complex rules, but there are mm -hmm. rules. They're learning to follow rules, one. Learning they're to follow instructions. They're learning learning to, follow to follow instructions. instructions yeah. So when a teacher is giving instructions, this is the linguistic, uh, the oral skill, that is, of listening to instructions and following instructions. Mm -hmm. That means listening to detail. You know, that kind of a skill is getting practiced. And then using the language for expressing whatever the requirement is of the, of the activity or the game. Collaborating trying to reach the goal and of course winning or not winning is basically uh, you know having a lot of fun yes so now let's uh, look at it again the benefits of the language games we'll quickly run through them uh, there's a focus on completion or winning not of the linguistic element True. so though the teacher would have practiced the linguistic element though the teacher might pr provide word cards role cards or put it on the board, board, post it on the board, but even then the focus still remains the incompletion or winning of the game. The second one is it, the activity becomes interesting. It is not a boring drill work, you know, Absolutely. like the classroom activity, oh, these are dull sentences, I must finish them. So I can, we can play, uh, you know, practice grammar, we can practice uh, vocabulary, we can uh, like in context like storytelling, no? like you develop, so what do we think, how do we write a story? Children often think in storytelling, what do we write about? You know, often they are the first gear starting problem. Mm. So when you have that uh, activity with three boxes, they are at random picking up parts or bits and putting it together, it is a funny sentence that comes up. But it also gives them a start. Yes. A head start. It gives them a head start to start uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to begin from here. So if you say the brown bun rolled down the dark green forest, then it could say it was afraid that uh, some animal would eat it up. It looked here and it looked there. And then another child adds up and adds another sentence. Another student adds another sentence. And the story also goes on rolling. Sometimes it may go totally out, you know, something what you imagined it to be. But it is very creative activity and children love to make up stories. But in doing so, they're actually using a lot of English, the words in the correct word order. And they are using simple past tense or past continuous tense because all narration is in past tense. So they're mm -hmm. also getting, uh, making sequential presentation of yeah, ideas, yeah. you know, they're learning that. Orally they're learning that, they could go back and write the story down along with illustrations. So again, there is another kind of activity. activity yeah? So let's look yeah. at the third point here now, cooperation and teamwork. So there is a lot of putting together and the teacher would cleverly put them into mixed ability groups so that they can share. And mixed ability group would also have different learning styles. So if Anju is visually very, uh, uh, I mean, very high on the visual uh, skill, visual aspect, and I am on auditory, so if it's a game where we have to listen, then I would be sharper and guess. If it's something to do with reading and looking at pictures, Anju would help. So what happens is we all, the ch children all contribute. One. With their learning styles, right? With their learning styles. Yeah. But at the same time, because we, Anju is visual, I am not. But it gives me an opportunity to hone this visual, visual skill. skill. So basically teacher's job is to understand the different learning style and maybe, you know, identify the learners with different learning styles to help them and provide something for each of them. Each learner thinks there's something in it for me, but also to develop these other skills in the other students. So all they see, the grannies, this, this one, is wonderful for the kinesthetic learner mm. who learns by doing by things, by yeah. touching, to so movement, you know. And of course, because uh, we, of our uh, constraint of space, etc., we couldn't do many more games. The games where children move about in the room, meet new people, uh, find, uh, uh, you know, their partners, about, yeah. find information, find their partners, find their families. So there is also a lot of physical activity happening in that room. Now, first, the next the point is there's an element of surprise at the end. In many mm. days, an element of surprise because you don't know what word is. There was it was element of surprise in the story. How the story will end, you don't know. Anju did not know what she would get and what would come out, and neither did we. There was laughter. 
There is also element of surprise, not even at every step, when you don't know what the other team is providing. Yes. If you have to counter that in your word ping pong or anything that you don't know, you don't like know. you know in your in your uh, material you have that uh, knots and crosses for grammar. Yes. yes. Your knots and crosses is basically you got to prevent the others from getting their the point and you have to make yours. Yeah. So you don't know what words. So you have to be very very mentally alert. So it makes them uh, mentally alert as well. And the next point here, it caters to different types. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we've just talked about that and encourages a lot of logical, logical thinking. thinking. No, there are games. I mean, uh, we, maybe um, none of these games did or very few of these games did, but there are many games which are problem-solving games. So there's a lot of uh, logical thinking happening. You're encouraging them to yeah. think logically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, hmm. we have come to hmm. the end of our session, oh. as you can see, uh, Shifali. Yes. And... Uh, it was a wonderful session as it always is with Shifali, very vibrant, a lot of information, lot of activities that one can try out in the classroom and uh, we are very grateful uh, to her and we hope that she comes again with many, many more uh, activity types, her knowledge and her brilliance. Thank you, Shifali. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was thank a pleasure. you, Shifali and thank you, students. Thank you so much. Thank you.